The North American Aviation XB-70 Valkyrie was the prototype version of the planned B-70 nuclear-armed, deep penetration supersonic strategic bomber for the United States Air Force Strategic Air Command. At these speeds, it was expected that the B-70 would be practically immune to interceptor aircraft, the only effective weapon against bomber aircraft at the time. Its high speed made the aircraft difficult to see on radar displays and its high altitude and high speed capabilities could not be matched by any contemporaneous Soviet interceptor or fighter aircraft. Two prototype aircraft, designated XB-70A, were built. These aircraft were used for supersonic test flights during 1964 to 69. In 1966, one prototype crashed after colliding with a smaller aircraft while flying in close formation. The remaining Valkyrie bomber is in the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. In an offshoot of Boeing's MX-2145 manned boost glide bomber project, Boeing partnered with RAND Corporation in January 1954 to explore what sort of bomber aircraft would be needed to deliver the various contemporary nuclear weapons under development. They also concluded that after the release of the bombs, the aircraft would need supersonic speed to escape the critical blast radius. From the mid-1940s, there was interest in using nuclear-powered aircraft in the bomber role. The aircraft would be flying as much as four times as fast. This led them to an obscure report by two NACA wind tunnel experts, who wrote a report in 1956 titled, Aircraft Configurations Developing High Lift Drag Ratios at High Supersonic Speeds. Known today as compression lift, the idea was to use the shock wave generated off the nose or other sharp points on the aircraft as a source of high-pressure air. To take maximum advantage of this effect, they redesigned the underside of the aircraft to feature a large triangular intake area far forward of the engines, better positioning the shock in relation to the wing. During a Mach 3 cruise, the aircraft would reach an average of 450 degrees Fahrenheit, with leading edges reaching 630 degrees Fahrenheit, and up to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit in engine compartments. The aircraft would have to use the hangars, runways and handling procedures used by the B-52. Through that same period, only two weapons proved effective against bombers, fighter aircraft and anti-aircraft artillery. As early as 1942, German flak commanders had already concluded that AAA would be essentially useless against jet aircraft, and began development of guided missiles to fill this role. Interceptor aircraft with ever-improving performance remained the only effective anti-bomber weapons by the early 1950s, and even these were having problems keeping up with the latest designs, Soviet interceptors during the late 1950s could not intercept the high-altitude U-2 reconnaissance aircraft, despite its relatively low speeds. Missiles also had greater altitude capability than any aircraft and improving this to adapt to new aircraft was a low-cost development path. Radar is line of sight, so aircraft could dramatically shorten detection distances by flying close to the Earth and hiding behind terrain. Radars of the era did not have the ability to look down, if a higher altitude aircraft's radar was aimed down to detect targets at a lower altitude, the reflection of the ground would overwhelm the signal returned from a target. He told a San Diego audience near NAW facilities, I endorse wholeheartedly the B-70 manned aircraft. Kennedy also made similar campaign claims regarding other aircraft. Near the Seattle Boeing plant he affirmed the need for B-52s and in Fort Worth he praised the B-58. The production order was reduced to three prototypes in March 1961 with the third aircraft to incorporate improvements from the previous prototype. The data from the XB-70 test flights and aerospace materials development were used in the later B-1 bomber program, the American Supersonic Transport Program, and via espionage, the Soviet Union's Tupolev Tu-144 SST program. The development of the Lockheed U-2 and the State Route 71 Blackbird reconnaissance aircraft, as well as the XB-70, prompted Soviet aerospace engineers to design and develop their high-altitude and high-speed MiG-25 interceptor. Harrison Storms shaped the aircraft with a canard surface and a delta wing, which was built largely of stainless steel, sandwiched honeycomb panels, and titanium. At Mach 3 cruising speed, the shock wave is bent back about 65 degrees and the wing is superimposed on the shock system which has a pressure 40 pounds per square foot higher under the aircraft than in front of the shock. This increased the aircraft's directional stability at supersonic speeds, shifted the center of pressure to a more favorable position at high speeds, and caused the shock originating at the intake splitter to reflect from the vertical tip surface giving additional compression lift. Like a number of other Delta Wing aircraft designed for supersonic speeds, the Valkyrie needed a feature to improve the pilot's view during nose-high low-speed flight and on the ground. The first aircraft was found to suffer from weaknesses in the honeycomb panels, 
primarily due to inexperience with fabrication and quality control of this new material. On two occasions, honeycomb panels failed and were torn off during supersonic flight, necessitating a Mach 2.5 limit being placed on the aircraft. NASA testing from June 1968 included two small vanes on the nose of a V-1 for measuring the response of the aircraft's stability augmentation system. YB-70 planned pre-production version with improvements based on XB-70s. B-70A planned bomber production version of Valkyrie. The sixth engine was inspected and reinstalled in the aircraft. The first aircraft was limited to Mach 2.5 afterwards. On 8 June 1966, XB-70A No. 2 was in close formation with four other aircraft for a photoshoot at the behest of General Electric, manufacturer of the engines of all five aircraft. The report concluded that from that position, without appropriate sight cues, Walker was unable to properly perceive his motion relative to the Valkyrie, leading to his aircraft drifting into the XB-70's wing. The aircraft was flown to the museum on 4 February 1969, following the conclusion of the XB-70 testing program. The Valkyrie became the museum's signature aircraft, appearing on museum letterhead, and even appearing as the chief design feature for the museum's restaurant, the Valkyrie Cafe. In 2011, the XB-70 was on display in the museum's research and development hangar alongside other experimental aircraft.